Steve Ditko, the man who created Spider-Man and Doctor Strange, has passed away at the age of 90. Found in his New York City apartment on June 29th, Ditko has often been considered a comic book legend, having contributed to some of the most iconic characters in the industry. Born in November 2nd, 1927 in Pennsylvania, he was the second eldest child to a master carpenter at a steel mill. Inspired by his dad's love of newspaper comic book strips, especially Prince Valiant by Hal Foster, Ditko would also grow up reading Batman in the spirit, and it would inspire his later career. After graduating high school in 1945, he enlisted in the army, serving post-war in Germany where he drew comics for an army newspaper. After he was discharged, he learned that his idol, Jerry Robinson, who had been one of the artists working on Batman's titles, was teaching at the cartoonist and illustrator's school in New York City. So he moved there in 1950 and enrolled. Robinson spoke highly of Ditko, saying that Steve was someone who, I quote, could work well with other writers as well as write his own stories and create his own characters. Robinson would help Steve get a scholarship the following year and brought in Stan Lee to speak to his class, which is where Stan Lee first saw Ditko's work. Lee at the time was the editor of Marvel's precursor, Atlas Comics. Ditko's professional career began with his work on Bruce Hamilton's science fiction story, Stretching Things, in 1953. He would then find work at Jack Kirby and Joe Simon's studio, working as an inker on backgrounds. Ditko also began to work for Charlton Comics, leading to his first published comic book cover, The Things, issued 12 in 1954. His work with Charlton would continue intermittently until the company ceased in 1986, crafting science fiction, mystery, and horror stories, along with co-creating superhero Captain Atom. In mid-1954, Steve's comic career came to a brief halt when he fell ill with tuberculosis and returned home to his parents until he recovered. Afterwards, he would move back to New York City in late 1955, working for Atlas Comics on a four-page story in Journey into Mystery, issue 33. This launched the beginning of a long relationship with Atlas, who would then become Marvel. Ditko contributed a slew of stories and amazing adventures, strange tales, strange worlds, tales of suspense, and tales to astonish. These issues would generally end with a sometimes surreal, sometimes self-reflexive short story by Ditko and Stan Lee. The popularity of these stories prompted Amazing Adventures to be reformatted into Amazing Adult Fantasy, featuring odd fantasy tales. This was an early example of the Marvel method, the artist-writer collaboration, best described by Stan Lee as, I quote, All I had to do was give Steve a one-line description of the plot and he'd be off and running. He'd take those skeleton outlines I had given him and turn them into classic little works of art that ended up being far cooler than I had any right to expect. Things only shot up from there. Stan Lee and Jack Kirby would begin working on an ordinary teen superhero by the name of Spider-Man. But when Kirby came back with the character's designs, Lee wasn't a fan. He would later say, I quote, I hated the way that he was doing it. Not that he did it badly, it just wasn't the character I wanted. It was too heroic. So Lee then turned to Steve Ditko, who developed a much more satisfactory looking Spider-Man. Despite Lee going with the cover that Kirby penciled for Spider-Man's debut, Ditko's design is what stuck. According to Ditko, I quote, One of the first things I did was to work up a costume, a vital visual part of the character. I had to know how he looked before I did any breakdowns. For example, a clinging power so he wouldn't have hard shoes or boots, a hidden wrist shooter versus a web gun in a holster, etc. I wasn't sure Stan would like the idea of covering the character's face, but I did it because it hid an obvious boyish face. It would also add mystery to the character. When Spider-Man debuted in Amazing Fantasy issue 15 in 1962, it would prompt his own series, The Amazing Spider-Man, with Ditko and Lee's ongoing collaboration leading to the creation of other iconic characters in that series, including antagonist Dr. Octopus, the Sandman, the Lizard, Electro, and Green Goblin. Despite this, Ditko, until 1965, didn't get the plot credit for the stories he worked on. Ditko was responsible for some of the most iconic Spider-Man stories, including the 1966 third part of the story arc, If This Be My Destiny, whose cover features Spider-Man pinned under heavy machinery that, in the story, through the force of his will and thoughts of his loved ones, he would escape from. Many consider this to be the peak of Stan Lee and Steve Ditko's work together. But Spider-Man isn't the only character that Ditko was known for. In 1963, he created the supernatural superhero Doctor Strange, debuting the character in Strange Tales issue 110. His artwork on Doctor Strange is often considered to be some of his best, known for its surreal mystical landscape and psychedelic visuals. This only continued to increase, most notably in the 17-issue story arc spanning from issues 130 to 146 in Strange Tales, where Ditko and Lee introduced Eternity, the character who personified the universe. While Strange wasn't the most accessible of Marvel's characters, Ditko and Lee's creation found himself adored by a niche audience, looking for an alternative to the more conventional superhero. But Ditko's time at Marvel would soon come to an end. After four years of working on Spider-Man, he left the company, with he and Stan Lee notoriously not being on speaking terms. Lee would go on to say that he never really knew Ditko on a personal level, and Ditko would claim that Lee was the one who broke off contact between them. Later on, John Romita, who was Ditko's successor,
successor on the Spider-Man title, would say in 2010 that Ditko and Lee, I quote, ended up not being able to work together because they disagreed on almost everything. Cultural, social, historically, everything. They disagreed on characters. Moving on, Steve would return to Charlton, where he worked on Blue Beetle, The Question, and Captain Adam. Many credit his time at Charlton during this period as important for influencing the characters that would later influence Alan Moore when creating Watchmen. In 1968, Ditko would work for DC, where he worked on Objectivist-inspired characters the likes of Hawk and Dove, among others. He was a firm believer in Objectivism. In 1979, he would make a return to Marvel to take over Jack Kirby's Machine Man and draw the Micronauts. In the years that followed, he would also work for a few independent publishers the likes of Pacific Comics and Eclipse Comics, but towards the end of the 80s, wasn't as present as much. One of his last original character creations was for Marvel, though, Squirrel Girl in 1992, alongside writer Will Murray, a character that more recently has attained quite the surge in popularity. In 1998, Ditko retired from mainstream comics, and his final mainstream work was a five-page New God story for DC called Infinitely Gentle, Infinitely Suffering, although it wasn't published until 2008 in the trade paperback Tales of the New Gods. From there, Ditko would do a series of self-published works, saying in 2012, I quote, I do those because that's all they'll let me do. For a man responsible for creating as many memorable and important characters as Ditko did, it should be no surprise that he has a handful of accolades under his belt, although he wasn't fond on the idea of awards. In 1987, he was presented a Comic-Con International Ink Pot Award, which was accepted on his behalf by Renegade Press publisher Denny Lubert, who had published Ditko's World the previous year. Steve would refuse the award, saying to Lubert, I quote, Awards bleed the artists and make us compete against each other. They are the most horrible things in the world. She then returned the award to the convention organizers. Prior to this, Ditko had received eight Alley Awards for his work on The Amazing Spider-Man between 1962 and 1965, and in 2015, he was awarded the Joe Sinnott Hall of Fame Award from Inkwell Awards. Ditko was also inducted into the Jack Kirby Hall of Fame in 1990, and into the Will Eisner Award Hall of Fame in 1994. In his later years, aside from self-publishing, Ditko had become a bit of a recluse, commonly declining to give interviews or make public appearances. Back in 1969, he had said that, I quote, when I do a job, it's not my personality that I'm offering the readers but my artwork. It's not what I'm like that counts. It's what I did and how well it was done. I produce a product, a comic art story. Steve Ditko is the brand name. From all of us at Top 10 Nerd, thank you for your contributions to the world of comics, Steve Ditko. It wouldn't be the same without you.